Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Following on with our series of easy to acquire early game equipment. We've already covered weapons and armor previously and now it's on to talismans. Talismen? Talismai? <laughs> I, I think it's talismans. And I have a top 10 for you, but 9 of the 10 are very easily acquirable. The 10th one is a little bit of a stretch, but we'll get there towards the end of the video. And for the purposes of this list, what I have classed as early game is anything you can reach before needing to fight any boss and with very minimal amounts of fighting. This whole video is completely in chronological order to make these as easy as possible for you to grab. Let's jump straight into the first one, and this is the Halig Drake Talisman. So we'll start off here at the first step right by Vare. Now you just want to make your way southeast, working down these cliffs and towards the edge of the mountain. As you get past the bats, you'll see another site of grace, and just off the edge here, you can jump down and use the spirit spring to nullify the full damage. From here, head north. I'm going to use the spirit spring again, just because I find them super fun. Does anyone else do this? You've already got to where you need to go, and you'll just use it anyway, because it's just super fun. Anyway, keep going northwest, and in no time at all, you will find the entrance to this cave. And just at the top of this slope is the Halig Drake Talisman. This talisman will serve you extremely well for certain areas in the game, because it massively reduces holy damage. The base version that we've grabbed just here gives you a plus 13% reduction, and then the plus 1 and the plus 2 give you 17 and 20% respectively. So even this base version here gives you a really decent damage reduction to all holy damage, which makes this amazing for the final boss of the game, and also obviously any other enemies that do deal holy damage. Now head over to the east of Limgrave, and I'll meet you in the Mistwood Ruins. This one is very simple. Once you get to the Mistwood Ruins, jump down the stairs right by the Sleeping Rune Bear, and you will find the Axe Talisman in the chest past the door. This will increase charged attack damage by 10%, and for anyone that doesn't know, that is your heavy attack. So holding down R2 or RT if the weapon's in your right hand, or holding down L2 or LT if the weapon's in your left hand. Next up, we're going all the way to the north of Limgrave, so meet me now at the Saints Bridge site of Grace, and then we'll head to the next talisman. You meet me now on the cliff above the Saints Bridge site of Grace, just outside of the death-touched catacombs, and we're just going to run all the way to the north, past this sleeping golem, and grab the Lance Talisman. This one will increase the damage of all your attacks while on horseback by 15%. And just to clarify, that is melee attacks only. Range weapons and spells do not benefit from this boost. But it is great in certain fights where you're kind of forced onto horseback. Two that come to mind that I find much easier on horseback are the Tree Sentinel and the Knight's Cavalry. Now meet me at the Saints Bridge site of Grace once again, and we're going to head slightly east. Just southeast of the Tibia Marina boss that you see just here, you will find a turtle right next to a Stone Sword Key statue. Use a key to access this room, and through the other door, past all the turtles, you will find the Green Turtle Talisman. This one just straight up raises your stamina recovery speed. So especially when you're on high levels of endurance, this is amazing, because it means you're not stood there for ages waiting for your stamina to recover. I really hope they add a plus one and plus two version of this in the DLC, because it is so powerful, and it's one of the talismans I used pretty much from the start of the game all the way to the end. Obviously, this is the first talisman where we have needed to use a stone sword key, and the next one requires a couple as well. So, if you don't have any yet, here are six incredibly quick and easy to grab stone sword keys. As you're progressing through the main sites of Grace towards Stormvale Castle, you'll find one right by the Stormhill Shack site of Grace. You will find another one on the massive bridge on your way to the Weeping Peninsula, which we will be going to shortly. You can opt to have another one as your starter item, should you wish. And the first time you go to Roundtable Hold, you can go and buy three of them from the Twin Maiden Husks. So load of options there to make sure you've got the Stone Sword Keys needed to grab these few talismans. Now we'll get into number five, definitely the hardest to obtain, but also very, very worthwhile. So meet me here at the Stranded Graveyard, and let's use two of these keys to unlock this hidden area. Now slide down the ladder, don't jump off or the poison will affect you prematurely, and then sprint to the other end of the room to avoid getting poisoned. 
Now that I'm waiting here, make sure you follow my instructions very carefully because this can be quite a dangerous area and especially at low levels, this chariot will one-shot you. Obviously, as you see me doing, time your movements with the chariots and hide in the holes off to the left or the right each time the chariot gets near you. Do this until you're on the third cubby hole where you see this crossbowman. Take them out and jump down with them. This will trigger the chariot to move his patrol route and come down to you. So hide in this cubby hole and wait him out. When you can, move over to the other side and get ready to very carefully walk off the ledge just here. Make sure you walk and drop off or you will miss this and fall to your death. And once you're down here, very quickly deal with this imp. Now you'll see we are beneath where we just were. There is another imp for us to take out. Then you just want to start running straight forward through this hall. Be very careful of the fire statue and the imp that's going to try and ambush you on the right. And once you finally make it past the statue and down the stairs, you can sprint to the end and grab the Erd Tree's favour. Now, two grafted scions will gank you. It is possible to run back past them and get out, but as you see, I didn't manage that. So try and come in here with no runes, so if you die, it's not a big deal. Now I'll meet you at the entrance to the Weeping Peninsula, and we'll go and grab one that is much, much easier than the Erd Tree's favour. As we're on the way to the Castle Morn Rampart site of Grace, getting ready to purchase the Crimson Amber Medallion, I just want to quickly address the Erd Tree's favour. At this low level, it's not going to be that great, because it does increase your health, your stamina, and your equip load, but it does it all as a percentage rather than a number. So you may want to keep the Erd Tree's favour in your pocket and not equip it till some of your stats are quite a lot more inflated, so you get more value out of it. In the meantime, this is a great alternative. Now we're here, speak to this merchant and you can buy the Crimson Amber Medallion, which is gonna raise your HP by 6%. Again, it's only a percentage, but it is twice as much as the Erd Tree's favor, and at earlier levels, HP is most definitely the stat you wanna value the most. We're now gonna head to the Third Church of America in Northeast Limgrave, and use the portal that I've marked in the little pool of water just here. This will teleport us all the way over to northeastern Kaled as we're finally leaving the starter area for the first time. I will come to the talisman that we're going to be grabbing next in just a second. Before that, I just want to let you know that the talisman we'll be grabbing after this one is a massive improvement on both the Crimson Amber Medallion and the Erd Tree's Favor. And especially at low levels, outclasses both of them significantly. So if you're not liking the fact that they're both a percentage, hold your horses, we are about to make that so much better for you. Now that we're here, head outside of the Bestial Sanctum, run round to the right, and you can hop off the edge of this cliff onto this tree branch. If you've already seen my top overpowered and easy to acquire starter weapons, you'll already know exactly where we're going here, because this talisman is very close to the Cincada that we picked up in that video. So just keep very carefully hopping down the buildings and the branches, using all the ledges as you go to make sure you're not taking too much fall damage. Torrent's double jump will come in invaluable here to really help you as you jump from platform to platform. And when you get down to the third and final platform, run all the way over to the east and you'll be able to grab the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman. This, in a very similar fashion to the Halig Drake Talisman, will reduce physical damage taken by 10%. And this is going to be absolutely amazing for most situations in the game. Physical damage is, of course, the most common damage type. So this will reduce the damage that most enemies deal to you. Now, from here, we are going to just keep running south past the Blackblade Kindred, grabbing the Golden Seed on the way, heading towards the bridge with the giant dragon on it. You can grab the Sight of Grace just to the left if you want as a precaution, but just run straight through the legs of the dragon and over to the other side of the bridge. Here, you want to hug the left-hand side and run around the putrid avatar waiting to kill you. Round the back of this tree, you can jump up the Spirit Spring, and before long, you'll be able to light the Sight of Grace for Fort Faroth. Many people probably know this area because it's needed for half of the Dectus Medallion, and also it contains the farm for the Sleeping Dragon. 
However, the reason we're here is to grab a talisman. So, wail on this wall a few times, and that will make the more powerful bats in this room start to walk towards the wall. And then you should be able to just casually stroll past them and make your way up the ladder like so. At the top, this is where you can grab the Dectus Medallion right. But more importantly, jump down onto the lower level, walk past the first hole in the floor and drop down the second. At the edge here, you can grab a Golden Rune 12, then jump onto the other platform and drop down another hole in the floor round the corner. And down here, we can find Radagon's Saw Seal. It's pretty impossible to get out at low levels, so just die and spawn back at the Fort Faroth site of Grace. And now I will show you the power of Radagon's Saw Seal. It will give you plus five to your vigor, your endurance, your strength, and your dexterity. So for physical damage focused builds, or even if you just want some more health and more stamina, this is absolutely fantastic. And at low levels, the health increase that it gives you offsets the increased damage that you will take. So you do take an extra 15% damage by wearing this, but it increases your stats at low levels so much that it still makes you stronger than not using it. So depending on where you distribute your stats, it's probably only at around level 40 to 60 that you want to replace this with either the Crimson Amber Medallion or the Erdtree's Favor. And as I was trying to work out so I could specifically tell you which one would be more beneficial for you, I came across someone who has attempted to do the maths for us, but Jesus Christ have they gone around this a very confusing way. So, let me read this out and see if anyone can make any more sense of this than I. To determine if a source seal is worth using, consider not only the item's penalty, but also the opportunity cost of a talisman slot. A player who replaces their source seal talisman with a mere crimson amber medallion will not only cease to take 15% more damage, but will also gain 8% more HP. Cumulatively, this brings them from 100 over 115% to 108 over 100 effective HP, which constitutes a 24.2% increase when dividing the newer fraction by the former. This is the difference between dying in 4 hits and 5, so if a build's last 20 levels don't give a 25% increase to health, damage, or something of equal value, it is better to remove those levels to strip the source seal off. Typically, this makes the source seal not worth using by level 80 to 100, where most builds should be nearing their first damage cap. And as I've just read that out, it has made more sense to me than it did when I was reading it by myself in my own head. But again, they're assuming quite a lot. They're assuming what stats you are and what level you are. So genuinely, what I've already said, use Radigan's source seal at low level. And as you get to around level 50 or 60, you'll find that it's more worthwhile to unequip this and equip the Erdtree's favor instead. Now we'll move on to the last official talisman that I've got for this list, then I will give you one bonus one that isn't attainable quite as early as the rest. For this last one, meet me at the Stormhill Shack site of Grace, and we are just going to head pretty much directly north until we get to this broken bridge with the Finger Reader Crone. Now you can jump off the edge here and run down this narrow mountain pass that will eventually bring you out in Lyurnia. From here, grab this site of Grace just to be careful, and then you want to jump down the gravestones to the northeast edge of this mountain. Now that you're down here, keep running northwest, and before long you'll come to the Purifier Ruins. In the main central ruin, you can smash through the wooden slats in the floor and make your way down into the cellar. Here, you can grab a Shabriri Grape, but more importantly, in the chest is the Two Fingers Heirloom. This is fantastic for early game faith builds because it will give you plus five to your faith stat. And finally, super, super quickly, the one last talisman I wanted to talk about is the Arsenal Charm. This will give you plus 15% to your max equip load, meaning you can make yourself a lot more durable and wear some heavier armor pieces without needing to pump too many stat points into endurance. And the reason this isn't officially on this list is you do need to trigger Nefelilu's questline in Stormvale Castle and then defeat Godric the Grafted so that she will move to the round table hold. Once she's here, speak to her here and she will reward you with this talisman. That is it for my top 9 slash 10 early game talismans for Elden Ring. Good luck in your quests, Tarnished. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.